you no. listen to me for a second. No, 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 no stop that, to Tommy. No, no, no. I don't understand the nature of you. Whoa. In 2007, I investigated Scientology. They sent their top handlers to try and stop me. So obstinately juvenile, it's unbelievable. One of them, Mike Rinder, official spokesman for the church and boss of its Office of Special Affairs. That never happened, ever, ever happened. It's a catch-22, John. That's ridiculous. All right, well, let's cut to the chase. That's ridiculous. Another, his colleague, Tommy Davis. Buddy, you got it. Right here, right now. I'm angry. Real angry. Second, no, in the end, they got to me. No, Tommy, you saw it! No, listen oh, to me! You were not there at the beginning of that interview! I apologize then, and I apologize now. Scientologists are obsessed with the mind, and that includes drills to alter behavior. But Mike and Marty say this knowledge can be used to unsettle and upset outsiders, like me. We're allowed to ask questions. We're allowed to go on the public street and ask that. Nobody and if you've is got objecting a problem to with that, you asking oh, questions. Oh, hello, what are you doing here? What is all this about? I came to talk to you. Oh, yeah, no, no, you the technique okay. is to push your buttons. People have emotional buttons. They have things that set them off. and. And they study you for that and then watch you very carefully. You know, I mean, you always compare notes. I'm sure you and Tommy compared notes. Like, you know, he's got a button on this, so, you know, he's going to push it next time. But they um, but not bigot. There you go. That was the, the that religious was bigot, the, right? That I'm was not a bigot. I'm not a bigot. Some no, you are. You're a closed minded bigot. You, you are a bigot. You're, You're the bigot. Uh, yes. I, Tom Davis, say John Sweeney is a bigot. You call me a bigot annoys me because I'm not a bigot. I understand that. But, but hold on a second. <laughs> but if I keep cutting you off like this, I will actually drive you nuts. If every time you start to say something, I cut you off, that's another way. If every time you start to say something, I cut you off, it's another way of getting you so that you become emotionally upset. It builds up like a dam. All these things you want to originate keep getting cut off, and it builds up like a dam, and finally it explodes. And it's one of these things. It's you annoying. see what? It, it is it's annoying. annoying. It's annoying. But I want to say something. No, you're, you're not, not allowed to say anything, anything right now. I'm actually not allowed to voice no, you can't say anything. Bigots are not allowed to talk. <laughs> Back in 2007, I had faced days of pressure from the church. Then they took me to their Industry of Death exhibition. One of the beliefs of the church is that psychiatry is evil, damaging humanity around the world. For 90 minutes, I had a tour through madness. And then a leading Scientologist took me through what they say psychiatrists did in the Holocaust. And that psychiatrists set up the so, whole euthanasia campaign in the concentration camps. They went into the concentration camps and they set it up and they decided who was going to be killed. That's the then Tommy Davis and I clashed again and I lost it. Oh, you didn't do that. Right, no, hold a second, so Tommy. No, 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 stop there, to. Tommy. No, I'm not stopping no. here. You listen no. to me for a second. No. You're accusing members of my religion of engaging in brainwashing. No, Tommy, you stop it. No, listen crime. to me. You were not there at the beginning of that interview. Although I'm not excusing my reaction, Mike and Marty explained to me that I'd given the church exactly what it wanted. Was that a setup? A setup probably is the wrong word. It was the intention of Tommy to create that effect on you, to goad you into a, a reaction like that. In fact, Tommy had announced uh, to David Miscavige specifically that he was the person that should be dealing with you because he could drive you psychotic. The church says I'm just trying to falsely excuse what it calls my totally unprofessional behavior. It says no Scientology techniques were used against me, and I can't justify myself 
by saying that Tommy Davis set out to aggravate me. But the messages to the leader's office seem to tell a different story. After I lost it, Tommy Davis sent this message. I am definitely the person who drives him more psychotic than anyone. He goes nuts around me, and I'm going to keep it up. Did Miscavige want this to happen? Absolutely. Absolutely, no question. This group anonymous is protesting. They, they, they claim that the church separates family members and there, there is this um, practice of disconnection where if you're a member of the Church of Scientology, to the best of my understanding here on, on, on this issue, because I'm not a member and I don't fully understand it, but if you're a member of the sure. Church of Scientology and someone in your family or a friend or your spouse is skeptical or critical of the Church of Scientology, you are supposed to disconnect yourself from that person. And, and Jenna Miscavige Hill, who is a nurse, uh, a nurse, a niece rather, of the church's leader, David Miscavige, says that happened to her which is the reason she left the church a couple of years ago, and she now has a website bringing together former members of the Church of Scientology to talk about issues like this. Well, I mean, first of all, this is a perfect example of how the Internet um, turn, turns things and twists things. There, there's no such thing as, 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 as disconnection as you're characterizing it, and, and certainly mm. you have to understand, well, what is disconnection? Scientology is a, a new religion. You have the majority of Scientologists in the world, they're first generation, so their family members aren't going to be Scientologists and this kind of thing. And, and Scientology absolutely mandates, and it's really part of, uh, of, of the code of being a Scientologist to, to respect the religious right. beliefs of others. So certainly, well, someone what, who's what, a Scientologist is going to respect their family members' beliefs. Well, and, what, and, what is, what and, is and we consider then? family to be a, a, a building block of, of, of any society. So a, anything that's characterized as disconnection or this kind of thing, it, it's, just, right. it's just not true. There, there isn't well, any such policy that, in the church that, that's dictating who people should or should not be in communication with. You know, it's, it, it just doesn't happen. The most fundamental explanation um, as regards Scientology's basic beliefs is, is that man is basically good um, and that the individual is a spiritual being that you've lived before and you'll live again and um, that your capabilities are infinite if not yet fully realized. It is an enormous commercial enterprise, isn't it? Uh, no, it's a religion. It's a, it's a large international religion that, um, that you know, is exactly that, a religion. But it makes an awful lot of money. Um, well, the church is definitely the beneficiary of, the, uh, of its parishioners and people who uh, feel strongly about their, their religion and choose to give back to it and give to the planet as a result. Why was Joe Reich declared a suppressive person? I have no idea. I have no idea. It's news to me. I, I, actually, I actually know Joe Reich. I, I remember meeting him many years ago. He was somebody that I knew personally uh, when I first started working with the church. I, in fact, I had no idea he'd even been expelled from the church. But once you expel someone from the church, you tell that person's family inside the church to have nothing to do with them. 
No, that is not the case. What, 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 specifically what you're referring to is if somebody is expelled from the church, um, anybody who insists on continuing to be connected to somebody who's been expelled from the church would be told that as long as they maintain that connection, they're not welcome in the church because the church, any organization, and particularly a church like other churches, has a right to not welcome in its, in its, uh, in its ranks people who are supporting or connected to people who are attacking the church and mean the church home. It's a very cruel doctrine, a very cruel policy to separate uh, family members from each other on pain of being expelled from the church. Well, um, let me put it this way. Uh, considering just uh, in the last couple of days and on my last uh, trip to Clearwater, uh, I saw Miss Peachy walking down the street, um, I believe, come to think of it, the street that she was walking down. I saw two or three pay phones uh, that she most capably could have stopped, picked up the phone, and called whomever she wished to speak with. So if she wanted to speak to her mother, I am sure she's perfectly capable of doing Why so. Why do you recruit children into the Sea Org? Uh, actually, we don't. Um, it's, um, uh, well, there are parents out there who would say you do. The Andersons, for example, would certainly say that you've done that. Okay. Well, in their individual case, fine. Um, the fact of the matter is, is that the church doesn't discriminate against people by virtue I of age. I stayed up 72 hours once, just trying to get someone approved to go auditor training overseas. 72 hours without sleep. Mm. And you were 15 at the mm. time. Well, if that is actually the case, that would be utterly and completely unacceptable. When Liz Anderson heard what had happened to her daughter, she was incensed. I was angry. Don't get me wrong, if I could have gone up there and, and King hit the very individual that signed my daughter to scrubbing out a dumpster, I would have been there. Was I angry? You betcha. Was that going to drive me to make a point? You betcha. Is that why I'm here today? Yes, it is. It sounds ridiculous and extreme. I, I, I question its, its credibility. I question its veracity. I don't know, I don't know who Jordan Anderson is, and, and I don't know when that occurred. I don't know who it was who was involved in it or why it is she would have done that. The church accuses the American litigants of lacking credibility and having ulterior motives. You're taking the church to court. Why are you doing that? Um, the, the, my lawsuit covers um, human trafficking, labor law violations, and forced abortions. And um, there's many reasons. I mean, obviously, I, I came to realize that if no one ever has the strength to stand up and say the truth of what went on, then it will only um, continue and get worse. My court case in the United States is basically alleging that they should be paying minimum wage. That's pretty much it. That, that there's human trafficking going on, which is basically um, holding people to work for a, a wage that's uh, less than what they should be being paid and not allowing them to just leave if they want to leave. One issue in the courts will be the fact that the church doesn't pay its staff in the Sea Org a minimum wage. It argues that members of the Sea Org are not employees, but volunteers who don't expect to be paid. We do so out of our own religious conviction and our desire to to work for and be part of and contribute to our religion and its activities. Um, and as a such, we don't as such we don't expect a wage, um, and it, we don't do it for a wage. However, Mark Headley says he signed a contract of employment similar to this one when he joined the Sea Org and was promised a minimum wage. Fifteen years later. I was paid an average of 38 cents an hour for working over 100 hours a week every single week of every year for 15 years. In 15 years, I made a total of $29,000 for 100 hours a week every week. 
When Mark and Claire met, they were posted to one of the church's most secure Sea Org facilities at Hemet, two hours drive outside Los Angeles. The facility is surrounded by high fences topped with razor wire. What did the church tell you about people who wanted to leave? Um, that um, people in the Sea Organization have foregone the right to, to leave. Um, and that was reiterated on many different instances. I mean, honestly, um, I've reflected since leaving, and the only thing that even comes close for me in, in terms of living conditions and everything else is prison. <laughs> Just is. Claire Headley joined the Sea Org age 16 and worked for the Religious Technology Center, earning as little as $23 a week. How hard was it doing that job? Um, words don't describe it. I mean, uh, you know, there was um, two, two to three year periods where um, if I slept at all, it was in an office chair or on a floor or two hours in a bed. Um, I very, very rarely saw Mark. What is the Sea Org policy on having children? Uh, Sea Org members do not have children. If someone is a member of the Sea Organization and they wish to have a child, they would need to do so outside of the Sea Org, at which point when the child is of age, uh, those individuals could come back, you know, to the Sea Organization if they so chose. And that's been policy for uh, almost 20 years now. Why does the church ask pregnant women in Sea Org to have abortions if they wish to stay in the Sea Org? Absolutely, that is absolutely not true. And I categorically, de categorically deny that allegation. Um, the, the Church of Scientology would under no circumstances, and it is certainly has no reflection in, in church policy, um, tell a woman what to do with her body, tell a woman what to do with regards to her child, her pregnancy, her family, or any such thing. If there thing. was a Sea Org staffer or a number of staffers who had advised women to have abortions, that's something you would utterly condemn? Yeah, absolutely. Joe Reich was never sent to the RPF, but saw it in operation. To me, it's, um, it's a slave camp, there's no question about it, because people are definitely abused. They're stripped of any rights as an individual. They're not allowed to talk to public individuals. They have to run from one station to another. No walking, no slow pace, it's movement. What it really is, is a breakdown of the, of the spirit. The Rehabilitation Project Force is a program within the church's religious order um, whereby Sea Org members who burn out on their jobs or um, are, are failing or incapable of or not performing well in their functions um, uh, can be given the voluntary opportunity to um, have a period of, uh, of, of reflection, rehabilitation, uh, redemption, uh, making of amends uh, within the religion as an alternative to being expelled from the church's religious order. So it's, it's a punishment, in fact? Absolutely not. The Rehabilitation Project Force is one of the oldest uh, religious traditions. It, it's almost as old as religious orders themselves. In correspondence with Four Corners, you described it as a private religious retreat. That's correct. Tommy Davis says that the RPF is a private religious retreat. A private religious retreat? He's got to be hallucinating. Ask him what drugs he's taking. Is it possible that a church attorney hired a private detective to follow Four Corners and Mark Headley while we were filming? Is that possible? I, I couldn't comment on that. I, I, I couldn't comment. I mean, I, I couldn't be able to. I wouldn't, tell, I, I wouldn't know how to answer that. I have no knowledge on it, so I, I don't know how to answer it.